President Zelensky is on a tour of the U.S. trying to sell his victory plan. But just what exactly is Ukraine's plan to win the war? And is there a better solution? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. Let's talk about it. Okay, so this has actually been an extremely important story um, because President Zelensky has, uh, 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 from a lot of his allies uh, who have supported uh, Ukraine's war against Russian aggression, have said, you have to have a real plan to win. This can't become a decade-long war, right? And so he has said, don't worry, there is a plan to get Ukraine to a, a, a feasible victory, right? A realistic path to victory. And he has been making the rounds in the United States outlining this plan. Now, it is not public officially, but we can infer and tease out based on leaks and, and uh, some statements, we can infer what that victory plan entails. Okay, so what we've heard is that part of the plan is to put a lot more economic pressure on Russia, right? overall to create conditions and an atmosphere that Russia will no longer be able to ignore Ukraine's overtures for peace. And Ukraine has indeed uh, been the only country thus far to open a actual peace summit with an empty chair ready for Russia and Russian allies to join. Um, some of the elements of this plan involve uh, Ukraine joining NATO or receiving a formal invitation to join NATO. Um, Right, the uh, permission for Ukraine to use long range weapons to attrit Russian logistics. Um, and then, of course, there is also rumored to be a, a plan for a large influx of NATO trained brigades, up to 14, according to some reports. Um, but what is the response to this plan? Well, before we talk about that, if you feel like you need your own victory plan, you don't need to tour a foreign country. You may just need a little extra caffeine. That's why I created Strike Gum, inspired by my time in Afghanistan, when if I wanted a caffeine uh, hit on a combat patrol, my only option was a lukewarm military issue energy drink. So I created a delicious mint, sugar free entire energy drink in a piece of gum. That's right. It's made in the USA, veteran owned, 90 milligrams of caffeine in each piece, 100 milligrams of alpha GPC. Literally, it is an entire Red Bull, an entire Amp Energy's worth of caffeine in each piece. You'd be crazy not to go to strikegum.com, pick some up, try it out. We see the proof is in the pudding. We are the highest rated energy gum on Amazon. Uh, we have uh, up to 50% reorder rates. So the... The facts are clear that Strike Gum is the premier energy gum. So don't miss out. Go to strikegum.com or pick some up on Amazon. The link is in the description. Okay, let's talk about the reception to this victory plan, right? The answer is it hasn't been positive. The White House has expressed concerns that this plan it doesn't have a clear strategy to actually win against Russia. This is a, according to both U U.S. and European officials. Some said the plan focuses too heavily on requesting more weapons and li lifting restrictions on long-range missile strikes, something that Ukraine has been asking for for a long time, right? White House officials are really worried the plan doesn't offer clear, actionable steps that Biden can support in his remaining four months in office. And U.S. and European officials said the plan looks underdeveloped and requests related to weapons are the ones that are the most specific and detailed, right? Now, what, what do I think this means? I, I actually think based on kind of the leaks that this is sort of, I agree, right? Now, there are more specific versions of this plan that I think could actually work, right? And one example uh, would be, yes, a tritting Russian, uh, Russia's ability to to uh, uh, conduct these kind of deep, uh, uh, treading their their logistics chains, right? Their ability to bring resources to bear on the front lines, right? That's where they're going to be most vulnerable. And yes, using a combination of Western intelligence and Western long-range weapons to reduce Russia's material battlefield advantage would be significant. Uh, but you would also see, potentially, uh, I think China is something where there has to be concrete diplomatic pressure placed on China uh, for its support of the Russian war machine, right? We know that a core part of Russia's ability to circumvent sanctions has been their support 
of uh, their support they've received from China, right? They're one of the largest economies. They share a border with Russia. It really is something that is, if you can break that relationship, um, Moscow is going to have a much harder time sustaining this war. Um, how could that be done? Again, something like carrots and sticks. Uh, you would have to have, again, now that inflation is falling in the United States, um, you could use as a, as a stick sanctions against Chinese companies or, or even potentially tariffs against Chinese goods, right? Again, in a diminishing inflation environment, um, you could use that. And you could also, of course, have the possibility of contingent tariffs, right? Things that will not kick in until after the election, because that's going to be something that the White House really cares about. What they don't want to do is reinvigorate elect, uh, inflation going into the election. But again, putting the screws to China, isolating Moscow diplomatically, isolating them logistically. <clears throat> and then, of course, the the to me, the deep strike... Uh, plan is the most reasonable. The, the hardest part would be fielding new combat brigades. And that is something that is a <clears throat> pretty big struggle for Ukraine um, is getting the material and training for these, these brigades. And what will they look like, right? Uh, again, for context, 14 brigades is the entire major counteroffensive effort that Ukraine launched last year. Um, and it didn't really go anywhere, right? It's not clear that Ukraine uh, can perform any kind of sustained offensive operations. Um, and in this war, this style of war, the only people that can sustain offensive actions is really Russia. And the only reason they can do it is because they're willing to assume an eye-watering number of losses in exchange for an utterly marginal amount of gains, right? You can see them gaining just a few hundred meters a day of terrain, <clears throat> So it's not really, I would say, a, a viable strategy right now. Obviously, Ukraine, with the element of surprise, was able to really put the squeeze on Russia in places like Kursk. But you saw this was temporary. For maybe 10 days, there was real momentum on the Ukrainian side. And then sort of the Russians were able to rush reinforcements in and stabilize the situation. So to me... The best way to get this kind of, of victory is going to have to happen at the negotiating table, right? And that seems to be Ukraine's current theory of victory is a high level of attrition, um, <clears throat> a high level of uh, diplomatic pressure on Russia, way higher than anything that they've been doing now. Um, and then, of course, <clears throat> there would have to be a propaganda element. The Russian public and Russian oligarchs would have to get turned against Putin. Putin would have to feel threatened and pressured by these oligarchs to end the war and by the Russian public. And, and that's something that a lot of people aren't really as willing to openly discuss. Uh, that again, Russia is absolutely, clearly, definitively spending millions to influence U.S. public opinion. But the United States does almost nothing to influence Russian public opinion, despite the fact that, again, the Russian public likely is absolutely sick and disgusted with this war. So, again, while this victory plan doesn't sound that original, I'm surprised because I was expecting a much more robust uh, and, and realistic victory plan. And again... I actually suspect that some of those victory conditions may also involve um, a more realistic settlement, right? And again, I'm a, as pro-Ukrainian as you get, but the reality is that Russia's occupied Crimea and the Donbas for 10 years now, and it's going to be very hard to dislodge them. So the best bet, one of the things that was discussed, was a NATO security guarantee-like treaty <laughs> for Ukraine, something where they said, listen, Russians withdraw back to the Donbas and Crimea. The door for NATO remains open, but Ukraine signs an agreement that says, listen, we are have a mutual defense treaty with the EU, for example, and it involves literal EU troops on the contact line so that if Russia moves it forward even a meter EU troops will become involved and it will instantly trigger, again, if not an EU, if not the EU, then perhaps an individual country like Poland, 
Germany, France, uh, may instantly trigger their involvement in defending Ukraine from further Russian aggression. All of these are options that could be considered and thought about. Um, but again, it remains to be seen uh, if these more realistic plans are actually on the table. Anyway, guys, that's all I had. Huge thank you to our Colonel Tier members like Bill Collier, Robert Colburn, Guy Marning, Eugene Cuesta, Chris Gorsuch, Fran Zacharias, AL90, and Pecha Tororu. Thank you to our Lieutenant Tier members. I couldn't do this without you guys. I appreciate you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.